Good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mind Your Business show. I am your host, Milt Walker, joined today with Mr. Tony Calloway, the private money godfather himself, uh, our co-host. And how's it going today, Tony? Good morning, everybody, and good morning, Maestro. I hope everybody's excited about this beautiful Saturday, July the 18th, because we have a special guest. But before we get to the special guest, I want everybody to take a look at that young man. He's looking mighty sharp this morning. Yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, I learned from the best. I learned from the best. <laughs> I told him when I was driving, and I saw he sent me a picture. I said, I started to go up, turn around and go home and change. But uh, we, got all, we got all dressed up this morning for the Mind Your Business show because we have a first. We're having our first ever presentation. And to provide that for us this morning, we have none other than one of the partners of TTI Capital, a growing, fast-growing uh, commercial real estate investment group. And representing them is none other than the incredible, awesome Miss Nalini Reddy. Good morning, Nalini. How are you today? Good morning, Tony. I am fantastic um, today, and it's a beautiful morning uh, over here in Michigan. So oh, it's, wow. it's wonderful uh, to join. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me over. And thank you, Milt, for all the technical assistance that we need for this Facebook Live to happen. Yes, well, we're really excited to have you with us, Nalini. And I got to share this with everybody. And, and Nalini, I don't know if you've discovered you got to have a sense of humor. When Nalini and I were talking, because we're looking at doing some uh, work together uh, for them to continue to grow their, their, uh, their uh, business, uh, I told her, I'd love to have you as a guest this Saturday on our Facebook Live. And she said, oh, that's wonderful. I'd love to do it. But but you remember, I'm in Michigan. I said, oh, yeah, that's right. We're doing it virtually. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to come to the studio. Nalini, we brought the studio to you. Uh, and we're excited. And I want to have ample time for you to go through and share with us your great presentation on commercial real estate investing and what you guys are doing and doing a great and incredible job of at TTI Capital and save time for questions. So with no further ado, ladies and gentlemen, get your notebooks, your pen and paper ready, put on your listening ears for Ms. Nalini Reddy of TTI Capital. Nalini, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, folks, I'm just going to uh, do a small presentation, you know, and I'd ask that if you have questions, you know, uh, if you could uh, hold off till the um you know, end of the conversation, you know, we will go through all of your questions, make sure we answer your questions. Um, and, uh, you know, so without further ado, I would like to dive right in. So this uh, uh, conversation today is going to be about investing in multifamily of all the real estate classes. Uh, this is uh, where we are going to focus today. And, and you know, a lot of time, this is uh, the reason that I am doing this is because a lot of times folks come to me and ask me, why specifically multifamily? Why apartments? You know, why do you invest? So this, uh, you know, conversation should help answer some of those questions. This is going to be a purely educational conversation. You know, this is not um, uh, any sort of a solicitation uh, to invest or an offer to purchase or anything. This is purely from an educational perspective uh, so that, you know, you can use some of this information in evaluating real estate investment property uh, opportunities. So I would like to tell a little bit about myself and my journey into uh, this investment uh, opportunity. Well, I am Nalini Reddy, as uh, Tony introduced me. I'm 43 years old. I was born and raised in India. I immigrated to U.S. in 1998. Seems just like yesterday. I was this wide-eyed, uh, fresh uh, out of the boat, I guess, you know, uh, fresh out of the plane, uh, learning uh, to be here. And here I am, you know, 22 years later, um, you know, you know, sharing my story with you guys. And I don't do this very often. So thank you very much for joining on learning uh, and knowing, trying to know me today. Uh, I'm also an IT professional, you know, working in the finance industry and also a partner at TPN Capital. Um, you know, growing up, I actually come from very humble beginnings. My parents never owned a home, you know. So when I purchased my first home back in 2006, it was already an accomplishment in itself because um, I was, uh, you know, the first person in my home, or at least among my siblings, to purchase a home. 
And, you know, in 2008, when the, um, you know, the big economic meltdown happened, you know, I started reading about various types of real estate books, specifically some on the foreclosure, actually, to understand, uh, you know, what criteria results in foreclosure and how to avoid foreclosure myself. And that's when I kind of figured out, hey, there is an opportunity over here for me to make money. And since then, I flipped several investment properties, uh, you know, and I still continue to do. It's a little bit of passion of me, uh, mine. Uh, obviously, you know, when you flip uh, assets or properties, you know, that are one at a time, it does take quite a long time and it's quite long and painful. So over time, I realized, hey, this is not the route to do. We need to do something better uh, to achieve eco economies of scale. So I started looking into uh, multifamily, and that's when I teamed up with actually a long-term friend of mine who founded TTI Capital. Uh, we went to college together um, back in India. So I you know, started working with him, investing with him, and then eventually became a partner at TTI Capital. Um, yeah, and I know from a goals perspective, you know, I'm, I'm always a big believer that when you have a goal, then you have somewhere to go to. So I've set some goals for myself. You know, personally, I would like to retire at 45. Uh, I think I'm on target. Uh, and then I also have a real estate goal to own 10,000 units and a financial goal to have an income of $100K per month. You know, the first time when I said uh, these out loud, you know, people thought um, I was crazy and they thought those are ridiculous goals and virtually impossible to achieve. Uh, and here I am, you know, very short time after I said that out loud for the first time, you know, well into the way of achieving that goal and uh, actually now in a position to actually mentor people uh, as to how they could achieve these goals as well. So that's a little bit about me, uh, you know, and uh, obviously, you know, I have many, many layers beyond that. You know, I'm a wife, a mother, uh, you know, I have other roles that I play uh, as well. But, you know, from a real estate perspective, this, uh, I think, should give you a little bit of an insight about who I am, um, you know. So let me talk a little bit about TTI Capital, why I chose it, apart from the fact that it was founded by uh, one of my very good friends, uh, you know, that I have long term relationship with. Uh, apart from that, I chose TTI Capital because they are very like minded individuals, very type A, you know, alpha uh, uh, team members that, you know, don't let little, you know, hurdles s slow them down. And that kind of, you know, keeps me also high spirited and, you know, sprint towards the goal uh, and because we do it as a team we are able to achieve collective success so if you see as of now you know as our current portfolio we own over 2000 units uh, in north carolina south carolina georgia florida and texas we have a combined experience of 50 plus years uh, you know we have several partners uh, in there so if you look at each one of their strengths you know they bring in a lot of experience and a lot of value to the table um, we actually have, uh, you know, um, the full life cycle experience from acquisition all the way up to capital restructuring. Uh, we have experience in every stage and, you know, we've been uh, experiencing success. And it actually makes me very proud to be part of that, uh, this team. Uh, and as Tony was mentioning earlier, we are still relatively new firm. You know, we are only uh, nine years old, but to achieve... Uh, the kind of, uh, you know, achievement, which is 2,000 plus units, what it means in dollars is about like $130 million of assets under our management. That is a significant achievement uh, in that short period of time. So it makes me very proud to be part of the team uh, as well. So what are we going to talk about today, right? So obviously we're going to answer the big question, why apartments? And then we are also going to talk about where do we buy them, when do we buy them, and what kind of apartments do we buy, and how do we buy. So all of these questions, you know, we would like to answer for you. And if there's any myths that are out there, we would like to bust them uh, with our uh, information um, and, you know, um, move forward. So without further ado, let's answer, you know, uh, all of those questions. So there's various real estate uh, investment scenarios, right? So as I was mentioning before, I started myself doing one unit at a time. 
uh, you know, and that's a wonderful place. And I mean, HGTV made a whole bunch of careers out of, you know, a whole lot of people doing the one unit at a time. And people actually, most people that are interested in real estate don't even know that there are other possibilities. You know, when we look at the one unit at a time, we call it the slow lane. I mean, it's, you get, it would, it would still be profitable. You know, it would still be fulfilling to do it that way, you know, but it is definitely time consuming and it's definitely not a scalable model. And, you know, obviously it also is opportunistic and speculative, right? Uh, you know, so you have to be at the right place at the right time. You know, you also have to have the kind of support that you would need, you know, the team that you would need, the kind of funds that you would need. Uh, and, you know, um, that is definitely, you know, achievable, but it is definitely slow and painful. But now let's look at the fast lane, right? There's several models within the fast lane. You know, you can go purchase commercial assets like the office space, or you can buy apartments, upgrade and rent them out for the next 30 years and live off of the income. You can also buy the apartments and you can upgrade them and you can sell them and go buy new apartments, upgrade and sell and just continue the cycle. Or you can also do storage units, you know, medical offices. I mean, there is several, several real estate classes. Again, these bullet points are not an exhaustive list, but these are a few to name, you know, uh, for folks uh, that are, you know, trying to think about real estate beyond uh, one type of asset class. We specifically focus on buying apartments, upgrading them and flipping them um, and go, going and getting new ones. And obviously none of the, none of us actually have the kind of net worth or the uh, money uh, or the financial background to achieve that. So what we do is we do in a very collaborative approach. We invest as a group like you know, we have a close group of friends and family um, that come and invest with us. Uh, and then, you know, and we get a lot of referrals from our friends and family, you know, so our friends of friends and friends of family, you know, and family of friends, uh, they all come and invest with us. And, you know, typically uh, it's a longer cycle hold, like a three to five year hold, um, you know, so obviously this is not something like you get in, get out because there's a quick opportunity. This is a little bit of a longer cycle but the investment numbers are quite large. So if you're weak hearted, you know, uh, this probably may not be the uh, uh, fast lane for you, but you know, uh, if you are okay with listening to a $40 million flip or a $25 million flip and uh, are comfortable doing it, you know, then this is probably uh, the best lane for you to be in. So as I was mentioning, you know, we do specialize in this third bullet point, the apartments by upgrade and flip. So we specialize in, um, and to answer the question as to why apartments, we have um, low risk, you know, I always say low risk to people, you know, relatively lower risk. I mean, every investment comes with some risk, but at the end of the day, we need to be able to make a calculated, um, assessment uh, as to you know what low risk means right so let's explain what does that what does that mean it means that you know it is very immune to market conditions what, what does that mean meaning in a booming market it, it's like a no-brainer right i'm just going to use a metropolis you know say for example atlanta is booming and it's you know going crazy there's a lot of jobs there's a ton of new people coming in uh so there's a lot of you know economic drivers that are, say, pushing the Atlanta market up economically, right? So obviously, because there are so many jobs, you know, there's going to be people migrating into Atlanta uh, from other places uh, in search of new opportunities. So as, I mean, it's common human psychology, right? When we move into a new place, the obvious first choice for us to stay at is an apartment. So that boom basically drives the demand for the existing apartments so high that if we are in the market owning apartments over there, then we have uh, you know, the opportunity to be able to make very good money uh, because our apartments are uh, in high demand and there's only so much supply. Even if there's new apartments being built, by the time they're built, it would already be like two to three years and you know, it's a matter of that demand supply equilibrium uh, and it would help us drive uh, the prices, the rents up and you know, helps us make more money on our investment. So that's a no brainer, right? In a booming economy, apartments are in high demand. It makes sense. 
What about when the economy goes bust, right? What happens in that scenario? In that scenario, if you think about it, um, you know, people just don't up and leave their apartment just because they lost their job, right? Any human being, I mean, I, I mean I've done that, like, you know, when I first lost my job, you know, I, my first thing that I thought was, let me find something nearby. Let me find an opportunity where I live at. Then I would exhaust all the options. And when there is no opportunity, that's when I decided. That's usually a good six to seven month cycle. So just because the economy started tanking doesn't mean that, you know, the apartments would lose value because people are still locked into a lease. People may have a situation where their child may be going to a school uh, or they could have a situation where they have an aging parent that they're taking care of that lives close by and it's important for them to be there. So um, they they would still continue to stay in the apartments. And on top of it, you know, in a bust economy, you would have a lot of people that are actually selling their mansions or their large homes and actually downsizing and moving into apartments, which creates demand for apartments. So that's what I meant when I said apartments are, um, you know, um, relatively immune to economy. And then think about it. If you own your own home and then you also own, say, a condo that you rent out. For example, if your tenant leaves, you've lost 100% of your income until you're able to replace your tenant. But in the situation of a multifamily or an apartment, you don't have to have 100% occupancy in order to be profitable. You just need to have 70% occupancy to break even, right? So that gives you a lot of power. So even when the economy is going bad and say your occupancy drops from 95% to 90%, you are still profitable. You may not be making a killing, but you're still profitable. That is an amazing thing if you think about any business. Even if you think about what's happening right now, right, with COVID and everything, is there's a lot of, you know, um, um, guidance on, you know, not evicting your uh, non-paying tenants, not charging late fees. But if you see the collections are still strong because, you know, People still get unemployment and, you know, and they recognize the need for having a roof on their roof over their family uh, that they do make the payment. That is the beauty of investing in multifamily. And obviously, because of these reasons, you know, there is no major market swings. So there's no overnight shift in the economy, overnight uh, change in uh, the finances when it came uh, coming to owning apartments. And definitely when you have apartments, large apartments, like 100 plus units, 150 units, 300 units, the economies of scale uh, come into picture, meaning uh, the same amount of renovation that you would do for a single family home would be done in a fraction of a cost because you're able to give volume of business to your vendors, whether it's the 